you can incubate a lot of either negative things or positive things in sleep. This is getting too easy, just sleeping sadhana, hmm? So coming awake to an alarm bell with a sudden start is not the best way to do your life. How many of you find uh, that one day morning when you get up without any reason, you're just feeling ugly for no reason? If it is happening even at least two, three times a year, if it is, then you must do certain things before you go to bed. It's very, very important because unconsciously, you need to understand this, you can incubate a lot of either negative things or positive things in sleep. Either pleasantness or unpleasantness, you can incubate very effectively uninterrupted in sleep. You can also incubate it in the day, but there are so many interruptions, it doesn't happen very efficiently. But if you have a tendency to go to bed in a certain way and you wake up in the morning really nasty for simply no reason, that means you're incubating things in the night very efficiently. Bad eggs. This is not just about psychological disturbances, it can cause major physiological problems over a period of time. It's, it's important that you eliminate these things from your life. So, before you go to bed in the night, there are certain things that you need to take care of. It's best if you're eating meat and other kinds of meals, you eat at least three to four hours before you go to bed. The digestion is over. Before going to bed, drink a certain amount of water and go to bed. You will see it gets taken care of just like this. One simple thing can be just a shower, always to shower before go to bed, it'll make a lot of difference. In this weather, maybe cold showers are difficult, so you go for lukewarm showers, don't go for hot showers in the night, go for lukewarm showers, it makes you alert. So you will think, oh, I cannot sleep. It doesn't matter, you will sleep fifteen, twenty minutes or half an hour later, but you will sleep better because it will take away certain things. When you shower, it is not just the dirt on the skin that you're taking away. Have you noticed if you're very tense and anxious, whatever, just a shower, you came out, it feels like almost the burden has been taken away from you. Have you not noticed this? So it's not just about washing the skin, a whole lot of things happen when water flows over your body. This shower is a very rudimentary bhuti shuddhi because over seventy percent of your body is actually water. If you run water over it, a certain purification happens which is beyond cleaning the skin. One more thing if you want to do, you just light an organic oil lamp, a cotton wick, some oil, anything. What do you use here? Normal cooking oil linseed oil, rice bran oil or sesame oil, what do you have? Olive oil, fine. Any organic oil with a cotton wick, just burn a little lamp somewhere in the room where you sleep. You will see these things will completely disappear. If you can bring in a chant or there are nightly practices, yogic practices, before you go to bed, sit on your bed and do this practice. If you want to do Isha Kriya, it's available on the net. Generally, in India they told you, you should not put your head to the north and sleep. Hmm? Hmm? You're aware of this? If you put your head to the north and sleep during the night when you… when you're in horizontal positions, then slowly the blood will get pulled towards your brain. When there's too much circulation in the brain, you cannot sleep peacefully. If you have any kind of, you know, inherently weak aspects in your 
brain or if you're of old age, you could die in your sleep. One can have hemorrhage because extra blood is trying to enter the brain where the blood vessels are hair-like. Something extra is being pushed because of the magnetic pull. When you're in a vertical position, this is not so. The moment you become horizontal, this pull on the head is so strong that slowly the blood tries to move towards the brain. So to avoid this, this is true only in the northern hemisphere. If you go to Australia, you should not put your head to the south. If you're in India, you should not put your head to the north. You can put it any other way, it's okay. Keep this in your mind that you are truly a mortal, okay? Not in words, really. You could fall dead right now. Uh, you may be young, you may be old, it doesn't matter. You can fall dead right now. Yes or no? Before you go to bed, sit on your bed and think this is your deathbed. You have just one more minute to live. Just look back and see what you have done today, is it worthwhile? Just do this one simple exercise and you don't know when it really happens, whether you'll be sitting on your deathbed or lying in a hospital, all kinds of things sticking into you, who knows how it'll happen. But enjoy this every day that you'll sit on your deathbed, look back and see today, the way I've handled these twenty-four hours, is it worthwhile? Because now I'm dying. If you do this, you will live a worthwhile life, believe me. So every day in the night, all of you should do this before you go to bed. Last three minutes, everything that you have gathered, the body, the content of the mind, things, don't ignore small things, the small things are big things. I've seen how people are carrying their… their own private pillow, you know? <laughs> because it's very important. <laughs> so, your pillow, your footwear, if you have relationships, everything that you have gathered, keep it aside, sleep. If you sleep in that condition, you will wake up with much more light, with much more energy, with much more possibilities than you have imagined possible. Just sleep as life. Not as a man, not as a woman, not as this and that. Keep everything down, simply. See, I'm, this is getting too easy. Just sleeping sadhana, hmm? At least this you must do. So what kind of sounds come awake to will determine the context of the day and the future of your life in many ways. So coming awake to an alarm bell with a sudden start is not the best way to do your life. It is best that if you need a certain amount of sly, if your body right now because of the kind of food that you consume and the kind of thoughts and emotions that you process within yourself, Accordingly, you may… and the level of vibrance that you have managed within your body will determine how much sleep you need. Let us say you need three… I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's say you need eight or twelve hours of sleep. I was saying the wrong number <laughs> Whatever amount of sleep you need, you know how much you need. So you go to bed early enough so that you come awake naturally. If you're coming awake naturally, and suppose you have a doubt whether you will come awake or not, if you have a certain chant, if you've identified one of the Vairagya chants, you can use it. Physiologically, one important aspect of you is your heart, the pumping station for your blood circulation which pumps life across the body. This one thing doesn't happen, nothing happens. This starts from left side. So we told you, you know in India they have told you, when you wake up you must roll to your right side and get up, have they? Left side if you roll and get up, bad things will happen to you, did they tell you? Bad things are not about that, 
when you are in a certain state of relaxation, when the body is in a little relaxation, the metabolic activity is low. When you get up, there is a certain surge of activity. That's why they told you in India, see all these things are built into your life which you're throwing away. The whole science of living has been built into your life. They told you in the morning before you wake up, you must rub your hands together and see like this, huh? Not see like this, you must place it upon your eyes. You do this, you will see God. It's not about seeing God. If you rub these two things together, all the nerve endings, there's a heavy concentration of nerve endings in your hands. If you do this, the system comes awake immediately. You're feeling asleep, you're feeling sleepy, just do this and see, everything comes awake. So morning before you move your body, you get it awake first and then place it upon your eyes, instantly a whole range of nerves connected with your eyes and the other aspect of your senses come awake. Before you move your body, your body and your brain should be active, you shouldn't get up dumb, that's the idea, understand? <laughs> so you do that and then roll over to your right and get up. Today, if all of us go to bed, by tomorrow morning, nearly a quarter million people won't wake up. Natural death in the world. Suppose you wake up tomorrow, you guaranteed? Have you come with a guarantee card? No guarantee card. So suppose you wake up, let's say, just do this much, I'm telling you, this is a simple first step to your spiritual process, tomorrow morning when you come awake, check you're really awake or you're dead. If you're awake, it needs at least a little celebration. You don't have to get up and dance, at least you can smile till on. What a million people died, they were like you and me, poof, they went off, isn't it? Wherever you look, they're not there. Here I am still, alive, one big smile, will you? I'm talking management, you know? Then if quarter million people died, at least three to five million people lost somebody who's dear to them. You check those three, four, five people who matter to you, all of them are alive today. One more big smile, hello? Will you or not? Alive. If suppose right now, we put a gun to your head, will you think it's a relief? No, you'll be terrorized, isn't it? So that's how precious it is to be alive, isn't it so? That's how precious it is for you to be alive. So tomorrow morning, a quarter million people died overnight but you're still alive, does it not at least deserve a big smile, I'm asking you? And all the people who matter to you are all alive today, one more big smile.